Can we solve any of these problems, especially immigration? You can solve immigration overnight if we had a leader with balls. It really is that simple. You can stop the boat within a fortnight. You can stop heavily reduced legal migration over a year or two and then, then get it down to practically zero because that's what the public wants. All this can be done. We haven't got politicians who are, who are willing to sacrifice their careers to try to achieve it. The first thing we need to do is write a letter to the European Court of Human Rights saying, hello, we've left. That's it. And then we've left. And then we can do what we want. And it, it really is that simple. Some of the problems we've got are really complicated. Immigration isn't complicated at all. We pull out of the Convention of Refugees, the 1954 United Nations Convention on Refugees, but pull out of that because that's not fit for purpose anymore now. And we say, to, we say to the world, we're going to do what we want to do. And we don't need to be members of the European Court of Human Rights because we've never had issues of human rights in the first place in this country. We helped develop that court to stop mainland Europeans killing each other and, and us going back over there to sort them all out. That's why we created that court. We didn't do it because we've got a problem. We've never had a problem. We're the country the world, the rest of the world needs to look up to and do look up to saying that's the country we need to copy and we need a leader to take us back to those great heights where we're the country people want to emulate. I absolutely agree on that. And we, we are the pioneers of civil liberties. And But do you, well, two questions then. I'll ask firstly, but do you believe... The immigration is necessary, though, for some people say it's necessary for our GDP or they think it's necessary for our birth rate issue. Is there any positives to it? There's always positives to, to everything. Um, are those small positives worth the negative? Absolutely not. So first of all, we've got a Ponzi scheme in this country. We say we haven't got enough workers to do the jobs. We haven't got enough carers to look after our old people. There's two issues there. Why are we letting the state look after our old people? Families need to be looking after their elderly people. I'm tired of us throwing out old people onto the trash heap and letting strangers look after them. That's what families need to do. So that, that's something where we're letting our families down. But the more people we allow to come into the country in 50 years from now, we need even more people to look after them. It's a Ponzi scheme. This all collapses at some point. And at the same time, we're being told we need more workers and more immigrants. We're then being told by another group of people, AI is coming. There's going to be no jobs soon. So why are we letting millions and millions into the country? There's no jobs soon. What we need to do over a two-year period is we dramatically reduce how many people are coming in working. And we tell businesses what we're doing, and we need to stick to this plan because businesses then need to go, right, I'm not going to get any more Eastern Europeans now to pick my strawberries I need to get a bank loan and invest a quarter of a million pounds in strawberry picking machines. There's technology now for everything we want to do. Google later, strawberry picking machine. These robots that go onto the fields, it only picks ripe strawberries because it looks at the colour and analyses the colour of the berry. And, and, and it does that. And it picks them. We've got machines and technology for everything almost. So let's get people investing in that and give them a couple of years to do it. And we keep knocking down how many people are coming over. And then we need to look at British citizens who are sat on the dole. We've made it far too comfortable. So I can go down a, a route now of saying, punish those people. Or the, let's forget about punishing them. Let's talk about the environment and the messages society sends to people that makes them think it's okay to sit on benefits all their lives and let other people work and pay for them. That's the problem. So let's not punish people who have made a decision that was legal in this country, but let's start changing how we look at unemployment. The first thing I would do for all our benefit systems, apart from pensions, because pensions you pay into and it's a benefit you've paid into, but everything else, I would change it. I wouldn't call the welfare state anymore. Now I wouldn't call it benefits. I would call it state charity. And you, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here to claim state charity today. Thank you. Oh, you have an employment state charity. Yes, I am. Let's start calling it what it is, which is charity. And then let's start training up some of these individuals and forcing some of these individuals to start doing these jobs that we're having to get immigrants to do. That will drive up the prices of 
what it costs to employ a care worker. Stacking shelves in Tesco's, it'll, it'll, they won't be on minimum wage anymore. They'll be on 15, 20 pounds an hour. Our prices in shops will go up. I'm fine with that because that's helping my fellow citizens. I'd rather them be working and have a successful, productive life than dumping them on benefits and letting them lead unfunctioning, tired, miserable lives. So it's about investing in our own people. Yeah, I agree. And I'm, I've been on benefits as a, as a troubled youth. It's tough. It's no, it's no fun. And I, I personally only believe in incentivizing work. That's, that's what, what I believe. I believe a lot of people want to work on benefits. Some don't, of course, but mainly just incentivize work and make it pay, which no one's really managed to do. There was a scheme where you got for one year, you kept your benefits and you kept your wage. That was scrapped. No one has managed to radically incentivize. Well, of course, a human is not going to work if they're if they're struggling and they're at the bottom and they look at it logically and go, if I work, I'm going to lose money, yeah. make my life more unstable and risky and stressful. <clears throat> Who's going to do that? Eventually, I did do that because you, you take, but it takes a lot of character and it takes you have to personally sort of have a talk with yourself. But not everyone's capable of doing that. So how do we like radically incentivize work? We we stop annual increases in benefits, so we don't cut them because how can people live when we've just suddenly cut them? Because they're used to what they've got. We stop increasing them in line with inflation. So over time, they become less and less attractive. We then start driving up wages by reducing immigration. And then we start trying to introduce, for many of our issues, societal shame, where people are ashamed to be claiming benefits, are ashamed to be unemployed, because you look down upon in society, um, and society needs to take some responsibility for this. When I was a kid growing up on a tough council estate, I said all, all my friends, apart from one, had a dad at home, and they all worked. And we lived on a really poor, tough council estate, and in nearly every household, adults were working. But that culture now is gone, and the culture is sign on. Our education is to blame. We, we don't teach our kids now any work ethics, um, how to get a job. No, I'm working with kids who don't even know how to get a job, who will answer their phone in the middle of an interview that I've had employing people. Just a minute, mate. Let me get this. I'm interviewing you for a job <laughs> or turning up stinking oh. of cannabis. Oh. So our young, a lot, not all, but there's a percentage of our young people who are almost unemployable after 11 years of state education. Our state education fails one in five young people in England and Wales. It's eighteen percent. We fail them. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell me about it. I've been to a comprehensive school. They are awful, and that is terrible. People answering their phone in an interview, but it's not surprising, is it? And on the other stuff, AI. You're right. That's a good point. AI is going to replace a lot of these jobs, and the yeah, and the very good point on the short termism of, of immigration. We're going to hopefully have Paul Mullen, who's an expert in birth rates, come on and talk about all that. Uh, although there is an irony that a lot of immigrants do care for their elderly more than mm. more than you know traditionally british people do so that that's interesting but if you like that video don't forget to subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and comment and if you like what i'm saying about running for mayor of greater manchester then stick around tell your family tell your friends it's the only way i'm going to have a chance of winning is a grassroots movement so be part of that movement and hit that bell thanks